Hey guys, I got a little bit of a different video today. Things are moving very fast. In the space, as you know, and some people are worried that they didn't install Config UI properly. And as luck would have it, I have a brand new machine. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to answer your question about manual versus portable install and answer some of your questions with regards best practice as of February the 11th, 2024. So let's get going. First, you need to head to GitHub and click Confi UI. Make sure you're on the Confi Anonymous repo and scroll down. And this is your first option. Are you going to install manually or are you going to install with a so-called direct link to download? The simple answer is you're much better off using the portable install as opposed to the manual install. And the reason for that is the manual install does not give you any benefits over the standalone install. In fact, the standalone install has benefits in the sense that the environment is all virtual and local to that folder. So you're not gonna mess up anything else. Your life is gonna be easier. Uh, so click that and it's downloading. But I wanna touch on something. Uh, if you scroll a little bit further down, you'll see that there is an option here to use the PyTorch Nightly, which has alleged performance improvement. To the author's credit, it does say might. And the answer is it has no real performance improvement, uh, again, as of February the 11th, 2024, from what I can tell. So when you go and check out your uh, releases page, and this is an important point, you'll see that if you extend the assets folder, you're going to find that at the very bottom, the author does in fact provide you with that option to download the portable install with the latest PyTorch. Now that's not the one we're using here. We're downloading uh, this one here, the standard one with uh, CU121. And that's the one that I highly recommend uh, at, at this moment in time. You'll see it's probably this one we're downloading at this moment in time. Um, this brings me to the next point. So once your download has finished, uh, we're going to need 7z. What's that? That's 7zip. Let me show you what it looks like. Okay, here's 7zip. Make sure you're on 7 zip.org. The reason for that is there's some fakes out there, so you don't want to install some malware by accident on your computer and get this version, the 64-bit version, that's gonna work on your brand new install of Windows 11. The reason we're using 7-zip as opposed to the built-in uh, zip, uh, or I should say unzipper of uh, Windows 11 is because 7-zip support much longer file path, it's got other advantages, but 7-zip is the way to go, so go and download that. So once you've installed 7-zip on your machine, you'll find that it doesn't automatically open uh, the 7z files that you've just downloaded for config UI. So a restart will fix it, but it's much easier to go to tools, options, make sure 7z is selected, hit apply. I've already done it on my version. Press OK and you're all set. All right, so all you need to do now is right click your file, choose open with. Hey, 7zip is now here because it's associated as an extension. You click Config UI, Windows Extra, Extra, you press Extract, this window pops up. Personally, I've created a little folder called AI. That's where I put all my little AI tools. Uh, that's where I put Fukus, Extra, they all live in their own little virtual environment, they all portable install. Life is much easier this way, so I highly recommend going that way. And you press OK. And it's going to take a long time, so we're going to wait for this to finish, and we'll be back after that. All right, so this is when I'm very happy to have invested in a PCI 5 port because I must say that was blazing fast. A fast SSD is just as useful as a fast GPU when you deal with models and things like that in SD through Config UI or any other tool because the files are very large. So being able to get rid of them rapidly and moving them around rapidly is very useful. So let's get rid of the compressed file. We won't need that ever again and we can check what's inside. Ooh, there's a very important file. So let's go and have a look at what it says. Uh, it tells us that we can use a GPU model or a CPU model, but it will be slow. And by slow, it means unusable, let's face it. 
So you want to have an NVIDIA GPU if you're following this tutorial. I don't have an AMD GPU. They're badly supported at this moment in time, but it's still possible, of course. So it also answers your question as to how do you update it? And we're gonna touch on that in a second. So let's start Config UI in GPU mode by simply going to there, this little icon and clicking it. All right, so this is gonna take a little while, so I'm gonna fast forward it for you guys. Little word of warning here. The first time it runs, it's gonna be very slow, even if you have good specs like you see here. A uh, Couple of things to note. You'll see that maybe in your version, it says that it's not using what's called transformers, but it's written Xformers. And for that reason, you might worry, hey, am I getting the best performance possible? The truth is yes. In reality, since PyTorch has been updated, uh, you don't need to use the transformers. Uh, there's absolutely no reason to do so. Uh, it's gonna cause you more headaches down the line than, than not using them. So rely on the default uh, way of running Confi UI. You'll also notice that you have this option here to use the double dash notation to pass certain parameters. And one of them is going to be things like high VRAM, low VRAM mode. Uh, high VRAM mode, all it does is if you have enough VRAM, like for example, 24 gig, uh, it will try to use only the VRAM as opposed to using also your shared RAM, which is very slow. Again here, there's really no real advantage that I discovered from using this mode. And the reason for that is if you do exceed your VRAM for whatever reason, maybe you're using very large model, maybe using uh, a lot of different models on a single workflow, uh, you're not gonna benefit from uh, only limiting yourself to VRAM. It's just gonna run out of VRAM. So once you've executed this, automatically the Confi UI window will open with the default workflow. That's why we always see this little bottle, this purple bottle in, in most of the default workflows. That's where it comes from. And uh, another thing I wanted to point out is that if for whatever reason you lose that window, you can control click it and it will reappear so you never lose. The other thing that um, you should be aware of is that you can do this. So for example, I can use two different workflows and switch from one to the other, run this one, go back to that one. It's not a problem. You can do this. There's absolutely no issue whatsoever with uh, this, this particular technique. So feel free to do so. You can have 20 windows open. Sometimes I have even 30 workflows open simultaneously. What you can't do is run them simultaneously because of course it would exceed your hardware capabilities. All right, so the next thing we're going to need is Confi UI Manager. And I'm going to give you a few tips there that are not often mentioned. Uh, the first one being that while Confi Manager is awesome and you should 100% use it, I use it, it's not always appropriate to use it. And you'll see why when we get to the little bit more advanced part of this tutorial. So let's go and install it. The first thing we need is to clone it uh, where the custom node directory for Confi UI is located. And in order to do this, we need to use Git for Windows. Now there's two main ways to install Git on Windows that will give you a command line interface that allows you to use Git. First one is Git SCM, which is sort of like the OG. And then there's another one, which is this one, the git for windowsorg Personally, I prefer this one because it gives you a cute little GUI, a shell integration that works very well, and a credential manager, which kind of saves you having to install GitHub Windows, which is another thing. And uh, yeah, so go with that one. But hey, if you want to use SCM, go for that. So let's go and download it and let's install it. So quick little uh, tip here, when you install Git for Windows, I would recommend disabling Scalar, you're not gonna need it. Uh, also, when you press next, it's gonna ask you which text editor you want to use. So go for Notepad if you don't have anything else, 
Atom is brilliant. The problem is it's also superbly sunset. So don't uh, use that. I personally use Sublime, but it's not free. So go for Notepad if you don't have anything else or install Sublime if you're very serious about developing and this is something you want to do in the future. But again, it's not free. So keep that in mind. So I'm going to go for Sublime and for the next options, press next, let git decide. Uh, you want to choose uh, this option, which is the recommended option. You want to use the bundled open SSH. Again, the goal here is not to be perfect. The goal here is to get you up and running with something that works and that you're not going to regret in a few months. Okay. Uh, the open SSL library, the window style, checkout, mint TTY, fast forward and merge, grid credential manager, you want the caching. Uh, you don't want anything it's experimental. We're not here to take risks, okay? Press install, off we go, and I'll see you in a second. So maybe this is of use to some of you, but maybe not to everyone, especially if you're new. When you do work and you're trying to update your install or things of that nature, you want to stop the server. To do this, you hit Control C, press Y when it asks you if you want to terminate the bad job, and you're back to your desktop. All right, so in order to run this command, now we need to go to our install. So it's going to be under AI config UI portable. And we're going to locate where we need to run the git command, which is going to be under config UI custom nodes. From there, what you do is you click here in the file explorer and you type CMD. It's going to take you directly to this directory so you can work from there. Little trick here, maybe you're not familiar with it, maybe you are. I find it quite useful. I know I'm not using PowerShell, but this is again a beginner's tutorial. Just a quick note for those that are upgrading computers the way I am. Uh, what you can do is you can take your config UI Windows Portable folder and port it over to uh, the new computer that you want to use. You can use a network connection or a USB stick, whatever works, and it will function. It will work on the new machine, as long as, of course, the underlying hardware isn't too different. I mean, you can't go from NVIDIA to AMD. You would have to uh, obviously make certain modifications. Uh, in my case, however, for the sake of this tutorial, what I'm currently doing is I'm porting over all my models. So by that, I mean the contents of the models folder uh, clip vision, control nets, uh, my LoRa's, my checkpoints. I'm a big fan of Juggernaut, so I'm currently pulling this in. And I'll show you where to get your models uh, from going forward. But just so you know, it's possible to do this upgrade process very easily. If you're new to this, you need to download a model first and foremost, of course. So for those getting started, I recommend maybe something like Epic Realism. I'm not affiliated with any model creator, but I know this one works well. It also works with Animate Diff. So if you do more advanced thing in the future, it'll work nicely. It's V is baked in. It's Clip Skip is known. It's one. It's really easy to use. The good thing about this website, again, not affiliated with them, but what's nice is that it tells you the prompt that they've used. Uh, prompts aren't that important anymore, quite frankly, uh, especially in light of the new development with things like IP adapter, control nets, etc. But it's always good to know what sampler uh, they've used, what model was used, how many steps were used, the CFG scale, the, even the seed, so you can sort of give it a shot yourself, right? So go and download this. To do so, just go on the model page, select the version you want, so the latest one, of course, in this case, and press download. So as you can see, these are very large files, and my models are still downloading to my machine as we speak from my previous one. Uh, if you wanted an SDXL model, uh, maybe try Juggernaut. It's really easy to use as well, so it's a good starter model. Um, there's nothing wrong with it, by the way. You can do very advanced things with it. Um, and, you know, after that, it's a creative endeavor. It's a process. You're going to need to download LoRa's, and you'll see. There's a lot of things to download. If you're getting confused as to why I'm saying model and checkpoint, uh, interchangeably, that's because they are. Essentially, checkpoints are the big models that make the images, right? The LoRa's uh, and all the variations of LoRa's are going to be like micro or mini models you can add on to a chain of LoRa's to maybe draw a specific character you had in mind. And these are things that you can train yourself. It's really fun, especially if you have a lot of VRAM. There's a lot of technical details I'm not going to get into now because this is a beginner's tutorial. But yes, go and download your model and we'll come back.
Hey, this is Stefan from the future. So unfortunately, I'm in jail uh, and this really sucks because I forgot to tell you that models have licenses and licenses are very serious. Uh, you cannot use models that are not meant for commercial consumption in commercial projects. You cannot do so without explicitly requesting permission from not only the person who put out the model on Civit AI, but you should also uh, make sure that you obey all licenses, specifically the SDXL, i.e. the base model that most of these Civit AI models are based on. And as you'll see, this license requires you to pay about $20 uh, a month, I believe, uh, to Stability AI if you want to use it in a commercial context. Things are very, very vague right now when it comes to commercial usage. I recommend you contact a lawyer if you intend to put things into production. I certainly am myself uh, in order to make sure you do everything by the book. I'm not kidding. This is important. So after you downloaded your model and placed it into the correct folder, which is under models, checkpoints, and you can place it anywhere. You can even create subfolders. Personally, I like to organize myself with my in-painting model, my SVD, my turbo models, my 1.5 models, etc., etc. Some of them will have YAML file attached. Some of them will have text file attached because I like to organize my models that way, but the way you do your thing is the way you decide how you want to do your thing. However, they do have a specific placement because the various nodes will ex expect to find the correct model in the correct place. So you can't, for example, put a face restor model into your checkpoints and expect that to work. It's not going to work. It's going to want to be in there and vice versa, of course. So once you've done that, you go to back to your folder where you have stored config UI and you run the app and let's see if we get any errors. Nope, it's installing nicely. It might need to download some initial requirements at the beginning. Uh, let's try to zoom out a little bit here. Yep, uh, so some requirements are satisfied. I mean, this is a brand new machine, some are not, so it's kind of pulling things out. And Confi UI jumps out and appears. And now, obviously, I have my manager that's been installed. There will come a time where you want to update Config UI itself. I'm not talking about Config UI Manager. I'm not talking about models. I'm not talking about extra nodes. I'm talking about Config UI itself. To do so, you go to Config UI Windows Portable Update and you simply double click the batch file. Ideally, actually, you would start from a console so you can see what's going on. There's another option, which is Config UI and Python dependencies, but that one is not really recommended. There is no real reason for you to run it at any given time. That one, on the other hand, you might have to run every day because that's how fast the developers, Config Anonymous, are moving. And maybe even another extra tip, you're not stuck to this portable install. And here's, here's what I mean by that. Back in, uh, yeah, January the 5th, you see, so it's fairly recent, I had a little problem where I had downloaded this version and I knew that there was a newer version because I could see it on the GitHub repo, but I couldn't run update that. It didn't work. So the developers kindly replied and said, hey, there is a way to do this. So here's what I had to do. If you want, you can go to this thread. I'll put it into the uh, comments and it will teach you how to essentially go from the portable install to the git install. So when you want to update Config UI, you can do so by just doing a standard git pull and you're done. So this is important because it shows that you're not stuck and you have that flexibility and you will want, when you get more advanced, to have that flexibility. So thank you again to LTR Data for this tip, uh, because this is quite useful. So let's go back to Config UI and let's look at our manager. Uh, if we click Manager, now we can install custom nodes. I recommend, personally, that you install them one by one. The reason for that is there's this weird, <laughs> how can I say, uh, trend to download a very complex workflow, everything goes red, they tell you to install the missing custom nodes, and everything will be fine. Well, not quite. That's not how it works, I, I'm afraid. And if you don't believe me, you just need to go to the endless GitHub threads from the poor node creators that are trying to do their best, fielding hundreds of tickets from people saying, it doesn't work, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. The truth is, 
it's an early stage product, let, consider it to be an alpha. So sometimes, yes, you can use the manager to install a missing node, and sometimes it's best to install it manually. And this is particularly true for, uh, for example, the WAS node. The WAS node are very popular, but there is a recommended installation process. The same is true if you want to do face replacement using Reactor. You're not going to have too much luck with the manager. And the reason for that is the manager has no idea in what order things need to be installed. But if we wanted to get started, what we could do is find maybe a, a, a cool node. I personally like RG3. So RG3 adds new reroutes, new seed nodes. It, it's really cool. Let me show you how it works. You just press install. It's going to do its uh, thing in the background. So this is important to understand. It's downloading the files the git files in the background for this node. It's building essentially a node map, right? And nothing. It stops there. And here you see that it asks you to restart the server. This is true for every node set. So I know it's tempting to install every node that you're missing in one go, but please don't do that. You're going to end up regretting it. Do one by one, and then go check what's going on into, well, that was very quick. This is this machine is blazing fast. And you can see that it's actually on reboot, decides to go and install things then and only then. So if you have a multiple step process for a node, it's not gonna work so well. So please, please, please be careful. So now we have RG3 installed. Confi UI has refreshed itself. You need to close the previous window or hit refresh on an existing window. And then if I double click this and I type RG3, there you go. Here's the reroute from RG3. Why is this reroute better than the other reroute, by the way? Because you can do like showing them the label, you can rotate it, you can do anything you want with it. It's really cool. I re recommend it. I'm not affiliated with anyone for that matter. But yes, so you're all set. Config UI is running. You have a model. So now let's go and load our checkpoint using the default workflow. So in my case, I have tons of model because I've just gotten them from my computer. In your case, maybe you only have, let's take a 1.5 model, this one. The reason I choose a 1.5 model is because the clip text and code for SDXL model is slightly different and I wanna keep it as clean as possible. It's trained on 5.12, 5.12, so make sure that this is reflected in your empty latent and simply hit Q. And what's going to happen if all goes well? Uh, yep, there you go, it's processed and it took a glorious three seconds to produce this beautiful image, the standard default image in Config UI. You're ready to go. Everything after that would really be adding complications and I will have separate tutorials on new nodes. I tend to focus on more advanced things. This is a rarity for me to do this. Please understand that it's not my full-time job. I run an AI studio, so yes. Here we go. That's how you install Config UI on a brand new machine. It wasn't that hard. I hope you enjoy. <sighs> All right, oh, that's another one done. No, I, I told you I, I plugged your website. No, I did. I did. No, but...